Chapter 7, Lesson 6. How do you multiply fractions? Unlock the problem. Sasha has three-fifths of a scarf left to knit. If she finishes half of that today, how much of the scarf will Sasha knit today? So underline what you're being asked to find and circle the important information. You should have underlined how much of the scarf was Sasha knit today, circled three-fifths, and then also circled one-half. I included the words of that so that we realized it was one-half of three-fifths. Look right over here in the green box and press pause and answer those questions. In the green box, we have how much of the scarf does Sasha have left to knit? She has three-fifths left in it. And then of that fraction, how much will she finish today? So she's going to finish one-half of the three-fifths. That leads us to our numerical expression, or a multiplication sentence, one-half times three-fifths. One-half of three-fifths. So one way to solve this is to use our model. You can use two different colors, or you can use a lighter shade of pencil, and then the second round, use a darker shade of pencil. But for this first one, shade three-fifths of the model yellow. Do so. Right here, I shaded in three of the five columns made in this rectangle. The next step is to draw a horizontal line across the rectangle to show two equal parts. So now we're looking at this again as one whole rectangle and we're going to just divide it in half horizontally. So a half is about right there and we're just going to cut this in half. Now we are going to shade one half of the yellow sections blue. So really we would be working on shading this bottom half and we could essentially continue to shade in these two, but since they're not colored yellow, we really are only worried about the yellow parts. And so now, we count the sections that are shaded twice and write the fraction for the parts of the whole, so the whole rectangle, that are shaded twice. So, how many pieces are shaded twice? Well, there's one, two, three. So, I'm going to write three. And then how many pieces are in the entire rectangle? So using all of the lines, where can I count how many pieces? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten pieces in that rectangle. So it is now three tenths. Up to this point, it should be a review of an earlier lesson. So now we're going to compare the numerator and denominator of the product with the numerator and the denominators of the factors. Describe what you notice. What do you see from 1 and 3 to 3 and 2 and 5 to 10? Um, press pause and write a sentence or two of what you see. You should have said something to the effect as they are the answers if you multiply straight across, meaning that 1 times 3 equals 3, those are the numerators, and then 2 times 5 equals 10, which are the denominators. So let's look at this another way, using the paper and pencil, which is using the traditional algorithm. You can multiply fractions without using a model. You multiply the numerators, and then you multiply the denominators. So in this case, we have 1 times 3, and they're just rewriting it right here. So 1 times 3, and then 2 times 5, and then what's your answer? 1 times 3 is 3, and 2 times 5 is 10. In this case, you do not have to reduce or simplify. 3, right here, is a prime number. That means that you can only get by 3 by multiplying 1 and 3 and 3 and 10 have no common factors. So therefore, our answer is that Sasha will knit 3 tenths of the scarf today. Looking at another example, but first let's look at this connect right here. 
Remember, you can write a whole number as a fraction with a denominator of 1. So basically they're saying that if I take 2 and place it over 1, 2 divided by 1 is 2. So those are the same thing. You can write any whole number as a fraction by just putting it over the denominator of 1. So if we find 4 times 5 twelfths, we're going to find the product and then write it in its simplest form. That means that we're going to reduce it. So the first step in this is to write it as two fractions, is we're going to write 4 over 1. So 4 ones times 5 twelfths. And then we're going to multiply our numerators. We have 4 times 5, and then our denominators are 1 times 12, and then we're going to multiply. 4 times 5 equals 20, and 1 times 12 equals 12. The next thing that we need to do is we need to reduce or simplify our fractions. We can tell right now that 20 over 12 is an improper fraction, so it can be reduced, but let's just reduce it down um, as an improper fraction as far down as we can go first. So let's look at the numbers 20 and 12. Do they have a common factor? Do they have more than one common factor? Maybe. We could look at the number 2. They're both evens. So we could go 20 divided by 2 would give me 10, and 12 divided by 2 would give me 6. But they have another common factor. Let's look at the number 4. And we'll go ahead and write 4 in right here. 20 divided by 4 equals 5, and 12 divided by 4 equals 3. So 5 thirds. Now, this is reduced as low as it can go. 5 is a prime number and 3 is a prime number, meaning they have no other factors minus 1 and itself. So now we're going to write it in its simplest form. In this case, it's going to be a mixed number. So we're going to think 5 divided by 3. How many 3's are in a group of 5? Well, there is one 3 in the group of 5. And if we take that 3 out, what is left over? We have a remainder of 2, and then our denominator stays the same of 3. So, we can tell that 4 times 5 twelfths equals 20 twelfths, or in the simplest form, 1 and 2 thirds. Looking at the try this, this is an introduction to an algebraic situation, which th all that means is that we're going to be using a variable, we're going to use a letter to represent a number, and then they're going to give us a number and we're just going to plug it in. And so then we can ignore the letter from that point. So, evaluate c times 4 fifths for c equaling 5 eighths. So, according to this sen sentence, what number does C represent? Or in our case, what fraction does C represent? C represents 5 eighths. That's where C equals 5 eighths. So we're going to replace the letter C in the expression with what fraction? We're going to do it with 5 eighths. So let's just write 5 eighths right there in our equation. And now, it's just like any other multiplication of fractions. Our numerators, we multiply 5 times 4. Our denominators are 8 times 5. Let's uh, multiply them out. 5 times 4 is 20. 8 times 5 is 40. Can we reduce that? Well, they're both a factor of 10. Um, so we could divide by 10, and 20 divided by 10 would give me 2, and 40 divided by 10 would give me 4, but that would still be two even numbers. That would still be 2 fourths. I can reduce it even farther. So I'm just going to cross that out. What other number could I use? Well, 
we can see 20 goes into 40. So 20 goes into 40 one time. Or 20 goes into 20 one time, excuse me. And then 20 goes into 40 two times. So we can tell that 20 is exactly half of 40. So C times 4 fifths is equal to 1 half for C equaling 5 eighths. So now looking right down here, since 4 fifths is being multiplied by a number less than 1, should the product be greater than or less than 4 fifths? So they're thinking fraction 4 fifths is being multiplied by a number less than 1. That would be another fraction. Should it be greater than or less than? Write a sentence. Use the, cur use the word product in your sentence. The product should be less than because you are finding a part of a part. Work on the share and show problems. Remember to write the product in the simplest form. So yes, that means you do have to reduce and um, convert from an improper fraction to a mixed number if need be. I will be going over the procedures for numbers 2 and number 4 and then I will show you the answers to the rest. Starting at number 2, we have 3 eighths times 8 ninths. I am going to rewrite this just so that the numerators are written multiplying each other. So we have 3 times 8 over 8 times 9. So 3 times 8 is 24, and then 8 times 9 is 72. Now, what is a number that they have in common? Well, I know that 24, well, they both have 8. We can see this right here, 8 and 8. Um, so I'm going to divide them both by 8. So 24 divided by 8 equals 3. And then 72 divided by 8 equals 9. So right now our answer is 3 ninths, but that can still be reduced because they both have the number 3 in common. 3 goes into 3 one time, 3 goes into 9 three times, so your final simplified answer should be one third. And now looking at number 4. You do not have to rewrite it this way if you don't need to. So this time I'm just going to work through it. So I'm looking at 5 twelfths times 3 fifths. Um, I'm going to go 5 times 3 equals 15, because those are my numerators. And then 12 times 5 is 60, because those are my two denominators. And now I'm going to look at them, and they're both a factor of 5. I can tell this one ends in a 0, this one ends in a 5. So I can divide them both by 5. And right here, 5 divided, 15 divided by 5 is 3. And 60 divided by 5 is 12. So that is pretty simplified, but it's not as simple as we can get. Um, 12 and 3 both still have a number in common. They have 3 in common. So 3 goes into 3 one time, and 3 goes into 12 four times. So in this case, the most reduced answer is 1 fourth. I will no, now go back and show the answers and the most reduced forms for the rest of the problems. On number 3, you'll see that I just multiplied the, two, the numerator and the whole number. I could have just put the 27 over 1 and it would have been fine. And then 54, divide, um, 54 thirds, I just did a quick division problem, found that um, 54 was divisible by 3 18 times. 18 over 3 reduces to 6. And as you can see for this bottom row, they, none of them reduce. So you double check your work, make sure you didn't make a small computation error, and you may now begin working on your other tasks.